it, it could be up to me as a motivated individual to make the world a different place by painting graffiti and, you know, painting over it in a way that made sense. And how it made sense was, you know, using a four inch brush and painting the slats of, of roll down gates. And then at a certain point in time in the process, transforming these plain silver gates with a few extra lines to say the name Espo seemed pretty, pretty innocent and pretty perfect. Uh, the, the first time that I did it, like I did it a couple times in kind of like small locations, but the third time I did it was at the corner of Sixth Avenue and Watts street. If you know that corner, it's the main, one of the main feeds into the Holland tunnel. And the, the spot that I painted is still there. It's like still functioning. It's now a restaurant, but it's four gates and it's perfect height. It's, it's only, it's, it's head high, but it's, you know, thousands of cars go by this corner every day. I painted it on a, on a nice balmy winter day. You know, the winter of like 97 or 98 was like, super super balmy like all the way through like today like 50 degree days and i painted the spot but what was important about painting the spot was i started at two in the afternoon i started about three in the afternoon i had a shift at a bar around the corner mcgovern's 305 spring street it's still open if you want to drink and my shift started at, at i think five or six o'clock so I started at two, I was gonna wrap this thing up, I was gonna to go to my job. The thing about the corner of Sixth and Watts at this point in time, at this point in history is, they were dealing with major gridlock and the way that they were dealing with it was by having literally 11 cops like on the corner, directing traffic, writing tickets, dealing with people, just being a visual presence. This was the time that I chose to paint these gates illegally. And I was, in my mind, I'm painting my name, you know, regardless of like my, my quasi altruistic ambitions to make the world a different place and to remove the offending graffiti that I was covering my graffiti with but it was literally painting illegally in front of 11 cops, unlawfully in front of 11 cops. And it was without a doubt stressful. It was a weird mental gymnastics I put myself through, but I pushed through and do, did it. At one point, I'm like at the point where I, like, I'm putting an outline on the letters. An artist, writer, friend of mine named Reese, a-okay is walking down the street and he sees me painting like hey what's up man what's going on i was like i'm painting my name on this gate and he like when he realizes what i'm doing it, it look at first it looked like a kind of a huck finn tom sawyer kind of chore like this guy's painting a fence but when reese like clocked the fact that i was like doing this illegal wildly illegal thing in front of like almost a dozen cops he got a look on his face of like, like I was crazy and he was crazy for even talking to me and he just got off the block like instantly. And at that point, I really kind of lost my mind. I really started having real paranoid thoughts about everything, but it was cool as could be. Like I finished completely and I went to work, but a weird thing happened at work. Like I had like real kind of, post-traumatic stress seems to be overselling it but every time the door opened I like jump I like duck behind the bar it was stupid it was like really like you know I was kind of messed up for a couple hours after that but turning that corner and realizing like okay if I can do this in front of 11 cops and not get stopped there's no stopping me like there's no there's no breaks to this thing so I might as well do it and try and do it in every borough then I try to do it in every precinct and I just try to do it until the wheels came off of it. And it took years, you know, it was finally like I had an incident on 149th street that really was the end of it was 
I, I ran into just the, the, you know, I pushed my luck to the point where I finally found a landlord that was furious at, I had the audacity to paint his gate. He was like so mad at me. And he wanted to give me a lecture about graffiti. And, you know, it was crazy because he's, this is, the, the guy is on the block where if you see Star Wars and Case is walking through his projects and Case goes into his building. I wrote about Case in The Art of Getting Over, rest in peace. I had the honor of going to Case's house and I spotted the gate like next door, like, oh, I'm gonna get that spot one of these days. And I did. And if I talked to Case about it, he would have told me like, don't go anywhere near that guy. That guy is like, and he told me afterwards, he's like, I would have told you. That guy's like the worst guy in the neighborhood, like just for everything. The guy wanted to open up, he had some reason he had problems with Dominicans. And he was like, I'm gonna put all the Dominicans in this neighborhood out of business with, I'm gonna open up this bodega, I'm gonna open up four more. He had a huge plan. And somehow me painting his gate was like a, a real wrench in the works. Mm. So he called the cops on me. My mistake that day was I didn't leave my house with my ID. You know, it was that time in New York when if you didn't have your ID, you were gonna get thrown in jail or they were gonna process you. And I really fucked up. If I had my ID, and I told the guy, I was like, look, I'm doing this thing, exterior surface painting outreach, one person organization trying to make the world a different place. Like, what are you really mad at? Like, what's, I'll show you, I have a picture on my phone, not on my phone, my camera, of what this gate looked like, you know? You could take the camera, you could see, like, this gate was covered with graffiti. He called the precinct, here they come now. He called the precinct, I had another dozen cops in front of me. I had a two, it started with two cops on scooters. And before you know, it was like the captain came, you know, there was a dozen cops just sitting there scratching their head about. And they know this guy from the neighborhood, but they also know he's like a capital A asshole. They don't know me, I'm a white guy far from home. And they were just like, they were trying to give me the benefit of the doubt. They really wanted to let me off the hook, but I didn't have ID. So it was like a long hour of trying to negotiate how this was going to work. And the cops were just telling the guy, like, let the guy go. Like, he didn't mean any harm. The guy's like, no, I want him prosecuted. And they're like, look, man, that's your fucking right. But, you know, we got bigger fish to fry. We got other things to do. Like. So what it came down to was they called my girlfriend and they, you know, they played a game on her to see if I was telling the truth. And she did the right thing, told them the truth. And they're like, okay, we know who you are. We believe, we believe you're telling us who you're saying you are. We're going to go from here, you know? So of course that just happened to dovetail with, you know, a few days, a week later, two weeks later, the cops are already circling, looking for me, putting the pieces together. They had, they had some snitches that gave them most of the information. But what they really needed was somebody to, like, put me at the place, you know, red-handed. And they saw the, the gate was, like, 75% done. So they knew to talk to this guy. And this guy, like confirm the information that they already had and the cops came to my house and they they searched my house after that 